Hey everyone, thank you for being with me uh, one more time. I thank you uh, for your um, support, appreciation. Just very grateful for you. Here, here we are, another week the Lord has brought us through. Um, we're here for another Kingdom Prosperity uh, session. In the name of this one, we're coming out of Genesis chapter 31. And the name of this one is Leaving the Plantation. Leaving the Plantation. Amen. Amen. So you know how we do. We start out with, with uh, opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, O oh God. We bless you, Lord, for, for bringing us through another the week. We we ask you, Father, to, to uh, give us your, your mind. To loan us your mind, to loan us your your your, your thoughts, give, give us your perceptions, Father, as we as we study the Bible more, Father, and as we study the Bible more, what we're really understanding, we're not understanding you better, we're understanding ourselves better, and that through ourselves we may understand you better, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, Father, for for your enlightenment, and we we're asking for your direction, Father. I, I'm asking you to, to bless the viewers, Father. I'm asking you uh, to uh, to uh, bless us, my mind. Let them hear you and not me, Father. Give give give, give me uh, accuracy, Father, and and nimbleness of thought. In, in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. All right. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. Someday we all will be free, but you got to understand no one's coming to save you. You have to free yourself. <laughs> You're going to have to free yourself. And, and, and someone watching is like, well, how do I free myself? Uh, you're, you're going to be able to free yourself through your gifts and talents. Gifts, talents, and your network. Gifts and talents and, and your network. That is what is going to take for you to uh, break out, out of your uh, out of your uh, bondage, whatever that that may be. You know. It, it may it may even start with just asking for help. <laughs> okay. Sometimes just asking for help can lead you down a road you didn't expect. But if you're if you're truly in bondage, uh, movement is your friend. Okay, it's the idea of breaking out of where you currently are, and that is what what can really help you or get you on the right path. But what what I say is still true. No one is coming to save you. You have to save yourself. Uh, it, it, it may come out in, in a today, today's uh, Kingdom Prosperity session, but the difference between fr freedom and deliverance is not the same thing. Freedom and deliverance is not the same thing. Deliverance is exactly what it is. So, let's say I, I don't know. I, I order a pizza. So I order the pizza, I, I, I pay for it, I put in a, a request for it, I order it, everything, okay. So deliverance is the pizza coming from where it was to where I am. <clears throat> That's deliverance. That's deliverance. So the pizza, whatever way or shape or how it's made up from where it leaves is how it arrives when it reaches its destination okay so case in point the children of, of Israel they were they were not free they were delivered because they were enslaved in their minds the Bible calls it the great provocation so when you free two million slaves and they cross over the Red Sea on their way to to, to uh, Canaan they're still slaves. You free two, two million slaves. You didn't free two million free people. You free two million slaves. So the mentality goes with you. Now freedom is, is as Jesus uh, says, <laughs> free indeed. 
You have to be free indeed. To be free indeed, it starts with the inside, okay? Someone that, that is watching this video, they may have been in a, an abusive relationship, okay? They may not have seen their oppressor in 10, 15 years, but if they don't get help, and I mean clerical help, clinical help. I'm not talking about prayer. Because when you're in a fight, everything that you can get, get your hands on is uh, counts. <laughs> okay? If there's an intruder in your home and, uh, and and you're on your way down, grab the baseball bat, grab grab your hammer, grab your skillet, grab your, your spatula, whatever it takes. That's what it means to get in a fight. When you're in a fight, everything counts. Everything counts because the ultimate goal is to defeat the adversary. So if you're being oppressed or, or, or if you was in a, an oppressive relationship, you need prayer, spiritual counseling, as well as clinical counseling. The two are not the same. You can't pray away all damage. <laughs> no, you got to do the work. If you want to be free, you got to put in the work. If you're on, on a uh, nine to five job and you hate it, even if you're work, working from home, you still got to put in the work to uh, break away from it. Okay? So, yeah. I, I, I saw a very interesting uh, quote from uh, Alux, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, research uh, company uh, that, that I follow, they, they had a very interesting quote. They said, rich people try to get richer while, while, while poor people are, are waiting for someone to save them. <laughs> I, I, I'm just paraphrasing. So rich people know it's, it's on them to make themselves richer. Jesus said one time, do, do we not have 12 hours in, in a day? Implying it's 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of, of nighttime. So we all have this equal amount of time. How we use it is different. So if you're poor and you're waiting for someone to save you, you're still dealing with the repercussions of, of being a descendant of a slave. Because free people free themselves. They free themselves. Whatever it takes, they free them, themselves. That's why uh, I, I, I was having a conversation with, with the Lord uh, in my prayer time this week. And, and I reminded him, if you will, <laughs> I said, Lord, your word said you have given us the power to get wealth. The power, which means the ability to get wealth, the ability. He's not going to give us wealth because if, if you don't have the mind of an entrepreneur or, or, or a business person, see, it all starts with, with, with a mentality. So if you don't have the mind of a uh, entrepreneur and someone gives you wealth, all they did was they gave a broke person money. So a broke person do broke people thanks. You have no mentality to, to grow it or to save it or invest it. So yeah, that that's why we, we have these kingdom uh, uh, prosperity sessions is because for us to, to believe in God so much, a lot of us it, uh, are working from, from nine to five. We, we don't believe that <laughs> we need to be wealthy. So, so someone hearing this it, is doing the basic deflection thing. Well, we're not all supposed to be rich. Well, we're all not going to be because people like you say stuff like that. So people who say stuff like that won't be rich. Okay? So solution uh, presented it itself okay when a option comes up and your first indication is to be defensive and deflect look 
you're you're you you're trying to join in the wrong conversation because this conversation is not for you. Okay, this conversation is not for you. I saw a a a, a post the, the the other day that that that, that I found quite irritating. Um, I won't say what what it is, but I will say. When you see the post, and if you see the, the person who posted it, it's like, okay, that makes sense. And, and what I'm saying is, people will post something just so they can keep their core belief. When you really want, want to get people upset, all you got to do is rattle their core belief. That's all you have, have to do rattle their, their core belief all that changes or they, they are they are out of their comfort zone <laughs> and, and, and more times than not they're, they're more hostile is because they believe you are attacking them and you may may not even be attacking them okay so yeah it's it's a uh, crazy it, it, it's really crazy so we are going to, to get into this one and and the name of this one uh, is uh, Exiting the Plantation. Exiting the Plantation. Exiting the Plantation. So in Genesis chapter 31 starting in verse 1. And he heard the words of Laban's sons, and saying, Jacob has taken away all that our all, all that was our fathers. Watch this. And of that which was of which was our fathers has he gotten all this glory. All this glory. Let, let me point something out to you. This is the first time ever the term glory it appears in the Bible in the 31st chapter of Genesis. Now, when God was forming the, the, the earth and, and, and the Holy Spirit was moving upon the face of the deep, we don't see the word glory at all. Notice how the word glory here is synonymous with wealth. Okay. Because glory means several things. It means imprint or impression or result or environment. Okay? <laughs> That's what glory means. So he those that are spiritual will see glory as a totally different word. But the word glory is used in its practical sense. It means assets. Glory. It means results. <laughs> when you are a baker and you bake 30 pies in one day, someone can come in and say, look at you in all your glory. 30 pies. That's the product. That's the, the product. The results. We're not a results-based people. Okay? We are complaint-based. We are... Uh, uh, procrastinating base but we're not a results based people and that on those type type of things that they work uh, against us I heard dr. dr. miles Monroe say he said that um, um, if you're not planning for your prosperity you are automatically planning for for your poverty <laughs> Wow if you're not planning for your prosperity you're automatically planning for your poverty yeah. <laughs> That's good. I, I, I mean, he, he, he always does it. He always does it. He always says something that, that would just mess you up and be like, whoa, I need to do something, something different. And the moment I heard that, I, I started doing something, something different. Absolutely. When you are not planning for your prosperity, you are planning for your poverty. Amen. In verse 2, and Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and, and thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to, to the field unto his, his flock. So, 
as God is watching this this whole uh, oppression situation that I first pointed out when, when Eleazar met uh, Laban, I knew Laban was, was a different dude. I, I knew it was something about him, and this whole and, and this whole uh, uh, keeping Jacob trapped, if you will. It, it, it made sense. It, it made sense. Okay. So I'm bringing that out is because you know it's time to go, but it's something when God says to you undeniably, it's time to go. It's time to go. So from verse three, he said, it's time to, to go. And he says, I will be with you. So if he says, I will be with you, what he's letting you know is some circumstances are going, going to come up that is going to make you feel as though I'm not with you. Amen. So when Gabriel said unto the teenage Mary, uh, Virgin Mary, he said, you, you are blessed and highly favored. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. This is the reason why he, he said that. Because he knows something. He has overheard something. <laughs> that's going to make you think you're not blessed and highly favored. That's why heaven makes an appointment to tell you how blessed you are. Because your circumstances is going to make you feel differently. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So uh, another thing in verse four, I, I thought was very pro profound. And Jacob sent and called for Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock. So husbands, when the Lord comes to you and says it's time to go, and I don't mean leave your your wife. <laughs> this is the duty of, of a husband. He lets the household. This is what uh, the Lord told me. And this is my plan. This is how I'm feeling. This is how I see it. Here's my uh, plan. Okay. So I told a young lady a couple of years ago she, she was telling me about um, a previous relationship um, the, the, the thing I, I and, and, and she told me some, some some kind of situation she had with him the first thing I said to her was oh you you can't get involved with with, with a man that is not a strategist no it's in man to have a strategy. It's in man to have a strategy. So when, when you're dealing with a, 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 a man or, or in a committed relationship with, with, with a man that is not a strategist, he's not for you. No. He doesn't have to know everything. But he has to be known for being a strategist. And this is what you see in, in uh, Jacob. Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to, to the field unto his flocks in verse 5. And he said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but God of my father has been with me. And ye know that with all my power, I have served your father 20 years, 20 years. Under under honest certain circumstances, this whole process should should have taken seven. Twenty years. In verse seven, and your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I, I sensed the, the hostility that Laban had towards Eleazar because he totally planned on doing then what he's doing now to, to uh, Jacob. Keeping him. Making a slave out of him. In verse 8. And if he said thus, 
the speckled the, the, the speckled shall be thy wages then all the cattle bear speckled and if he said thus the ring straight shall be thy hire then bear all that the cattle ring, ring straight thus God has taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me amen you have to give something for, for God to bless you have to give God something to bless you have to give something tangible for God to bless okay because um, a, a sister in, in the church approached me years ago uh, she, she said she had a, an invention she had a, a, an idea and she said nobody else had, had this, this invention I was like okay and uh, she said um, it's this and this and this and this and I was like hmm okay so I was thinking that doesn't sound original at all <laughs> not at all and, and and that's what it takes when, when it comes to um, patents and, and trademarks um, you, you got to do your research or hire someone to do the, the research for you okay because as as far as anybody else knows you're, you're just operating out off of your feelings if you're operating out of your feelings or your emotions that that's that's faulty there okay which means uh, you have a large margin of, of error just because you feel it does not make it right listen to me ladies just because you feel it does not make it right so yeah uh, you know go with 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 your intuition but as you're going with it you're moving towards hard facts okay because facts are, are your friends facts let, let you know how, how you should further proceed okay all right In verse 10 and, and it came to pass at that time that, that the cattle conceived and that I lifted up my eyes and I saw in a dream and behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were wing, ring street and speckled and gristled and the angel of the Lord came unto me in a dream saying Jacob and I said here I am and verse 12 and he said lift up thine eyes and see all the rams which leapt upon the, the cattle are ring street speckled and gristled for I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee amen amen God is trying to get involved in your business he's trying to get involved in your or a business but you gotta trust him. just to let you know this process was a, approximately six years six years but people give up in six days and people give up in six months they say if, if you're an entrepreneur do not expect to see any uh, um, any returns until after five years that sounds about right because when you begin to invest in your own business and start up your own business, you have, you have to think long term. That's why you should never quit your job and then start your business. No, you should do both at the same time. Solomon says, uh, uh, cast our seed in the, the, the morning. Sow thy seed in the morning. Because you don't know when it's coming referring to working in the day and doing your business at night you don't know you don't know that's why you have to do both and may, may I say at the bare minimum you have to do both with the same intensity amen this was a six-year process yeah you have to go through five, six years for 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 the Lord or anybody else, rather, in in in, in that in that uh, in that case, 
for anyone to even consider you faithful, are you willing for doing it five and six years? Are you willing to do it for five, six years? And that's just get, getting started. It's because people have to take you seriously. People will take you seriously when, when you're there, even when they're not even thinking about it. Amen. In verse 13, I am the God of Bethel, which thou anointest the, the uh, pillar, and where thou vow for vow unto me, now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. So heaven reminds Jacob about the vow. That's so encouraging. That is so encouraging. God reminds Jacob about the vow. I have the, the, the Lord um, offered an opportunity to me to go partake with him in a uh, in a covenant. He offered this opportunity to me in 2011. And for the better part of those nine years, I have kept my end of the uh, covenant for the, the, the better part of it. Through hard times, through, you know, financially tough times, I have done it. So here it is. God is reminding Jacob. So when God is ready to bless you, he's not blessing you because of you. That's <laughs> the, the average believer is very, even though they give praises to, to God, they're still self-centered. <laughs> the average believer is still self-centered because they still think it's about them. God is not blessing you because of you. God is blessing you because of him. Well, someone's watching this is asking why, why would I say that? Easy. He says, I am the God of, of Beth Bethel, where thou anointest the, the pillar, and thou would vow for vow unto me. Now rise, get thee out of this land, and return unto the, the land of thy kindred. He's blessing them because God said he bless them. Yeah, I'm not doing this because of you. I'm doing this be, because I'm keeping my word. I'm keeping my word. God is still an oath. With, with, with his father Isaac which about this time is already deceased God is still keep, keeping his word with uh, Abraham see God has nothing else greater to, to swear by but by himself so he's blessing you because of previous conversations and even then it was still about God you being discouraged and you being broke and you looking broke and you talking broken that that's 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 not good for 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 business that's not good for for business see the most valuable thing to a king is his reputation the most valuable thing to a king is his re reputation if if people of faith has have a reputation of being broke that's bad for business because it lets people who don't worship God or follow God or, or obey God. It's like, ugh. Ugh. God, y'all 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 going to church 12, 12 hours a weekend and and y'all and y'all life look just like mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You gotta believe and it can't be about you. It cannot be about you. All right, to the next verse. In verse 14, And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in, in our father's house? Are we, in verse 15, are we not counted of him strangers? For he has sold us and has quite devoured also our money. 
So I, I, I can imagine that Laban is still tight with, with his sons, but this is the the the, the te testimony of both daughters. Uh, are we not counted as strangers? Is there any portion or, or inheritance for us in our father's house? No. We're not in the will. We're not in the family business. He sold us away. Verse. This is probably the only time documented we see agreement between. Well, probably the second time because the first time is is the proposal of the mandrakes. So, um, in verse 16. And for all the riches which God has taken from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. Do it. Notice how God will tell you what to do. But a lot of us don't do it. You gotta do it. This whole YouTube channel, I have fought for about three years. Three years. I remember the moment when, when, when God said to me, and, and, and I didn't understand it then, he said, because when I share the truth when, and when I share my persuasions, it makes people very upset, very upset, in particular people, people of faith. Cardinal people, they're like, hmm, cool. <laughs> But I remember when, when the Lord said to me, I want you to talk when nobody else is talking. And I was like, I, 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 don't, I don't remember it. I, I don't think I said anything when, when, when he said that to me. He said, I want you to talk when nobody else is talking. It took me about a year to I, I figure it out. Even as I'm talking to you, you may be talking, but I can't hear you. So I'm talking right now and nobody else is talking. It took me about a year to understand he was talking about media. I want you to talk when nobody else is talking. Yeah. Verse 17, then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle and all his goods with, which he gotten, the cattle of his getting, which he had gotten in pan, uh, panorama, pa panorama, I'm sorry, panorama, for to go for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that there were her, her fathers. So, what makes Laban's family different from Abraham's family? Here's the uh, difference. And, you know, uh, a, a lot of families. The difference between Family A and family B is not what you say, is what you do. It's not necessarily what you say, is what you do. A the house of Abraham didn't have idols. The house of N N Nahor, um, the house of Laban, they had idols. They had idols. So, People can see better than, than they can hear. So what is the, the difference between the two families? Not so much what you say is what you do. And that's the difference between my, my family and, and your family. Your, your family and, and, and somebody else's family. It's not what you say is what you do. Because everybody can do a lot of talking. Everyone can, can, can make a lot of claims. But do you do what you say that you do? Or we're gonna do. <laughs> Amen. In verse twenty, and Jacob stole away uh, unawares to, to, to Laban the, the Syrian, and that he told him not that he fled. 
So he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the, the river and set his face toward um, Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he told his brethren uh, unto him pursued and pursued after him seven days journey. And they overtook him in Mount Gilead. Now, now you see why uh, God said, I'll, I'll be with thee. Because when God says, I'll be with thee, that doesn't necessarily imply you won't face any trouble. He just says, I will be with you <laughs> when the trouble comes. Amen. And God came to, to Laban the, the Syrian in, in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, e either good or bad. Just watch what you say. Laban is going to have plenty of words. Plenty of words. But just take heed that you speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Well, well, why would God say that? Possibly because every time Laban before then has spoken, have spoke good or bad, it, it didn't mean anything. Because people pay, you're known for what you do, not for what you say. And that, and that is to also help my my young ladies who are who, who was interested in, in, in a guy. You got to pay attention to what he what he does. Listen to what he says, but follow what he does, because you that that's how you can test his, his integrity. That's how you can test it, his integrity. Verse twenty-five. Then Laban overtook Jacob, and Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Gilead with, with his brethren, and pitched in the mount of, of Gilead. And Laban said, said to Jacob, What hast thou done? Thou hast stole away unawares to me, and carried away my, my daughters and captives, uh, taken with the the uh, sword. And twenty-seven. Wherefore? Do if thou flee away secretly and steal away from me, and did not tell me that I might have sent thee away with with, with mirth and with songs and 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 and, 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 and tambourine and with harp. So in the Middle East, it was customary when when you have someone who stays with with you for for an extended amount of time. Uh, it, it was customary for for an uh, celebration to, to, to take place but Jacob his wives all four of them they all realized mm, we're good <laughs> Laban is a slave master Laban is a slave master and even by his own daughter's testimony they know that there's no inheritance for, for us we're, we're working for him for nothing. He sold us. We're we are basically property to him. In verse twenty eight, and has and has not suffered me to kiss my sons and, and my daughters, that thou now done foolishly in so doing. In verse tw twenty nine, it is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But but the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, night, saying, uh, take. Take thy heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. In verse 30, and now thou that would have needs be gone, because thou uh, sore longeth after after thy father's house. Yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? The difference between the house of Abraham and the house of, of, of Laban? Idol worship. So Rachel, as they're packing up, Rachel took her her father's uh, idols. In verse thirty one, and Jacob answered and said, Laban, because I was afraid, for I've said, preadventure thou would have taken by force thy daughters from me. In verse thirty two, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods, let him not live. That is a, a very overlooked statement. So, keep in mind here. Uh, 
they're leaving. They're exiting the plantation. Rachel steals her father's idols. This is not, Jacob's not privy to this. So Jacob lets Rachel know. I, I'm sorry. Laban is bringing this up to, to, to uh, Jacob. Laban is telling Jacob, you stole my stuff. <laughs> Jacob is like, oh, I don't know what you are talking, uh, talk, talking about. Laban, you have lied about everything. So I will tell you this. With whomsoever thy findeth thou gods, let him not live. Jacob issued a death sentence on whoever had the idols. Jacob is not aware that his wife of intent took the uh, idols. That's why you have got to be careful what you say. I don't care what kind of mood you're in. You have got to be. I understand venting. But venting needs to have a cutoff point. Because after that, it just be, becomes de destructive. So, he put out in the atmosphere a, de a death sentence. He doesn't know who has it. But you still got to be careful what you will say. Before our brethren discern thou what, what is thine and wit with me, we are talking about some, some real viol violation. Someone coming in among your home setting and going through all your stuff. Yeah. And take it to thee, for Jacob knew not that Rachel had a stolen one. Verse 33. And Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two uh, maid, maid servants' tents. So he, he, he has four wives, but he found them not. Then went he out of Leah's tent and into, in, into Rachel's tent. And now Rachel had taken the, the images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat uh, uh, upon them. So, as, as I'm researching this, so when, when you get on a camel, especially if you're affluent, you are on a camel and you're, you have like a cushion type of stool, okay? Very, very plush, depending on how, how much money you have. But um, you have a stool, like a, a cushion. So that's called a camel's furniture. So Rachel, who figured that Laban would, would, would catch up to them, is the only place to hide them, especially on, on short notice. So she hides them under the camel's furniture, and she sits upon them. Now, watch this. Now, now uh, in, in verse 35, And Rachel said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord, that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. It, hurts, it is her time of the month. And he searched, but found not the images. Mm, mm, mm. Man. Your de deception can get you killed. Your own deception. Okay. Um... I do not believe the world holds misbehaving women accountable, but I know life will. I do not believe the world holds misbehaving dishonorable women a, a, a accountable. I'm, I'm saying that for, for a variety of, of reasons, okay? Because a, a woman can believe whatever a, a woman can. And even if you try to have a conversation with her about it, she will get hostile with you. Okay? So, with a common sense, okay, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Someone coming to have a conversation with you could try to, try to help you. Just because it's uncomfortable does not mean it's evil. Okay? So, 
people really don't the world really don't hold women accountable however life does so life is like okay you can believe whatever you you will believe you 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 became a christian by by a choice you got in the drug game by, by, by choice. You love that man by choice. You love that you married him by choice. You you do this to your children by choice. You do that, so on and so on. Life is very hands-on with uh, men. In particular, men of color. <laughs> Life is very hands-on. But, but with women, I believe it's a little different. But I do believe that life holds even women a, accountable. Okay? It's because why did Rachel do that? Why did she steal from her, her uh, father? She didn't have to do that. They had more than plenty. They were able to leave with everything and then some, but she took it too far. So when Laban on a seven day journey tracks them down at Mount Gilead, comes to them and violates them by, by going through all of their stuff belongings everything it's the one area that Laban didn't check because of the lie another lie if you will that that, that, that Rachel tells okay but this is this is where, where I'm coming from where life will still hold, hold you a accountable Jacob still proclaimed whoever took your, your gods let him not live because Jacob didn't know who it was life will still hold you a, a accountable a, a, as a as a my, my first and former pastor said you may get by but you won't get away okay so it's good to live with in integrity it's good to have conversations even uncomfortable ones because the thing about learning is you have to have those uncomfortable conversations for you, for for your core core of of, it's good to have uncomfortable conversations from 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 time to time. That that's worth having. Is to number one to be agreeable. You can you you don't have to agree, but you still have to be agreeable. And, and what what I mean by be uh, agreeable is don't be hostile. Okay, it's because. When you're debating with a woman in particular, she is saying a lot of things to you. She she is she's saying a lot of things to you. I I, I remember having a disagreement with uh, someone that that I liked years ago, and we was doing it through text message. Wow, right. Let me tell you, I don't know what kind of phone she had. <laughs> <laughs> but but as I'm putting my statement together, she has fired off like <laughs> eight paragraphs at me. Okay, <laughs> she she has already fired off eight paragraphs. So that that's that's how it is, man. The the woman magnifies. The woman magnifies whatever she is given. She magnifies whatever she is a incubator. She magnifies whatever she is given. If you give her frustration, she will give you hell. That's in her power. That is in her her, her power. The greatest gift to, to a man out, outside of Jesus Christ is a woman. It's because she is an incubator. So it means whatever you give her, she multiplies and gives back to you because she doesn't keep anything. She does not keep anything. So by her doing this, in God's perfect will, the man is to come up with the strategy for their, their the man as a husband. Um, come up with the strategy. He shares with her. She incubated, incubates it, thinks about it, and give it back to you. Totally different than how you gave it to her. That's not a curse. That's a, a blessing because she is your help me. This term help me is only seen in the Bible one other time when it refers to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the woman, the honorable woman, <laughs> women, women, it doesn't matter if she's honorable or not. 
she is made in the image of the Holy Spirit because she is made to be a helpmeet. Now, she's she's going to incubate whatever she she gets. So if you don't like what you get back from her, think about changing what it is you you you, you give her in the first place. Now that that said, you still have to uh, have difficult conversations with, with her. Because here's the thing with the man. The man still has access to relationships. The man has access to relationships. The woman has, the woman being the wife, has access to sex. But the man has access to relationships. Because it's only through him that you're going to go any further. Now, this is what single women in their middle age years are just figuring out. <laughs> Men have access to relationships. If a man is pleased with you, he will put you further. Relationship wise, he will put you well further. Okay? But if you're going to be disagreeable all he's thinking let's cut this let's cut this <laughs> let's cut this <laughs> let's let's cut this now what, what what I mean by let's cut this let means let's stop let's stop that doesn't mean that relationship is over to him it doesn't mm. no because a man is more prone to work through di disagreements than, than, than a woman is. Just food for uh, thought. So life is holding Rachel accountable because God has empowered all of Jacob's words. Now Jacob said it. Jacob was thinking it's probably Laban or or. Or one of one, one of Jacob's cousins, uh, uh, Laban's sons, or one of his goons, or whatever. That's what Jacob's thinking. He does not think that the only woman he ever loved did the crime. Life, ladies, will hold you accountable, even though nobody else will. I had this um, experience, if, if you will. I, I had this experience uh, a few years ago. I, I, I was at work. And I'm working, and then this revelation dropped on me. I'm stuck. I don't mean stuck pro, pro professionally. I'm stuck relationship wise. No one wants to know who I am. No one is trying to visit me. No one is trying to take me anywhere. No one's calling me. <laughs> I am stuck. And, and, and I and I really thank God for that moment. It's because it, it was his way of showing love by having uh that revelation because I had built this wall up around my life I had kept out all these wonderful things wonderful people even though I didn't see them as wonderful I also shut off all the possibilities that I don't even know about because when opportunities come up and when people think of you they're thinking mm, nah <laughs> Because they don't remember what you said, but they do remember how you made them feel. So I had this revelation at work. And I remember saying to myself, I am stuck. This is what I believe single women are still fighting. Because they still see them themselves as young, as uh, vivacious energetic, loving, sensual, sexual even, all this other stuff, but you haven't had a serious relationship in 10, 15 years. But you think that somebody is just coming to, swoop, to, to, to sweep you off your feet. 
why, when you haven't had any successful relationships with, with a man over a year, and even if it was over a year, that's two, five, 10, 15 years ago. How is that different from someone who's seeking employment but have no work experience or <laughs> haven't been in a relationship and it's like, so wait, what, what have you been doing all these years? Yeah, it makes the man suspicious about you. But but in your mind, you have all these suitors. Someone who, who's, who's wanting to have sex with you it, is not, it, it, no. <laughs> no, no. They're trying to have sex with you. They're not ha trying to have a relationship with you. That's not the same. That is not the same. He may not even tell you that. <laughs> yeah, he's really feeling you, but you don't even know. You don't even know. That's why you got to pay attention to what he does instead of what he says. Amen. Amen. So, ladies, life will really hold you accountable. And, and from that revelation that, that I had, I began to uh, put relationships first and start building relationships starting in, in the 2016. And I would say I did a pretty decent job of that. I did a pretty decent job of that. And it's really all glory to uh, God. I did the the uh, the legwork, but but God made things happen. Didn't make make, make friends with with uh, everybody. I even made some 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 uh, enemies. <laughs> But I made a whole lot of more friends than I did enemies. Okay, so I'm 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 pleased with it so far, so far. Amen. All right. In verse thirty-six, and Jacob was wrought and chode with Laban. He got heated. Yeah, yeah. When when you got twenty years of oppression built up in you, yeah. It's going to get heated. <laughs> it's, it's going to get very heated. Amen. All right. Okay. And Jacob answered and said to, to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so highly pursued after me? Seven days, seven days journey. And you, so, so, some may, may be thinking, how is it that Laban caught up with him? Easy. Jacob has a caravan of his 13 children, his four wives, hundreds of cattle, if not thousands, men and maidservants. You're, you're moving a uh, a uh, A, an entire family <laughs> okay Laban and his goons and, and, and his sons maybe are, are on some horses <laughs> so even though Jacob and his family had the, the, the head start Jacob was tra uh, Laban was tra traveling lighter he was moving faster and what he was trying to, to, to catch was moving slower okay You have got to believe that God wants you to be blessed. After you do that, you got to hold on to that mentality. And do know he's not just going, going to just give it to you. Jacob had to put in some practical work to make his cattle multiply. He naturally had to do it. Now, when God got involved, God put his super on Jacob's natural to make it supernatural but you got to give something for God to work with you have to okay in verse 37 whereas thou has searched all my stuff and has found all thy thou household stuff set it here before my, my my brother and thou brother that they may judge betwixt us both 
These twenty years have I been with thee. Thy ooms, thou, thou ewes, thou she goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. Now, uh, uh, very interesting. He said, Twenty years I've been with you. Your baby cattle. Or, or goats or, or cattle, baby cattle, I have not eaten. Your she goats, the ones who ca who are barren that cannot produce, they are not that they are no good but but to eat. I didn't touch them either. And and and, and thy she goats have not cast their young barren. And the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. I have not touched anything or violated anything that has belonged to you. Verse 39. That which was torn of beasts, I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Amen. Because shepherd's law, <laughs> if you will, um, if you lose, it's, it's like working in a restaurant. And, 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 and you and you drop dishes and glasses you have to have proof of it <laughs> okay because over time um, that has to be re re replaced and paid for much like cattle uh, uh, the cattle that was torn by wild beasts I did not bring the proof to you I bear the loss of it of my hand did, did, did I require it whether stolen by, by day or, or stolen by, by night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me. So in the hottest of hot days and the frost by night in the coldest of cold, cold nights and my sleep departed from my, my eyes. Amen. So uh, as I was touching on last week when, when uh, Leah came out to meet uh, Jacob coming from uh, the, the field. When, when your day starts at about 3, 4 a.m. every day and you, you're working 12 to 15 hour days, you're not thinking about, oh, I got to deal with this, this, this. No, no, no. Leah came, came, came out to him and said, oh, well, Ray, Richard and I, we, we, we struck an, an agreement. I traded my son's man, Ruben's mandrakes, I, I believe it was Ruben's mandrakes for, for you to sleep with, with me tonight. We don't see any protest from, from a Jacob. Why? This is why. 12 to 15 hour days, the hottest of days, the coldest of nights, 20 years. Sleep has departed from my eyes. So in this process, Life was holding Jacob accountable. Though it was evil, life was still holding Jacob accountable. Because all of that, that deception and lying over the uh, birthright. Thus have I been 20 years in thy house. I've served thee 14 years for, for thy two daughters and six years for thy cattle. And thou hast changed my wages 10 times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham and, and, and the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely thou hast sent me away now empty. And God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesternight. And Laban answered and said, unto Jacob. The, the, a heated argument is happening. Thy daughters are my daughters. Thy children are my children. Laban's like, everything you have belongs to me. Boy, I'm telling that that is the thing about corruption. They will believe it so hard that it, it will be, become true. Everything you have belongs to, to, to me. These cattle are my cattle, and all that thy seeth is mine. And what can I do uh, uh, do this day unto these my, my daughters or unto these children with, with which they have, have have born? Everything you have came from me. If that doesn't sound like a slave master, just a slave master. 
certain people think they made you. See, the thing about the plantation in itself is not evil. It's the who owns it and their mentality is what makes it evil. People really believe they made you. People really believe they, they, they own you. That's why I, I, I wanted to name this Exiting the, the Plantation. Because this was horrible. A horrible, horrible experience. However, life had to hold Jacob accountable. It had to. It had to. In verse 44. Now, therefore, come thou. Let us make a covenant. Oh, Jacob. Jacob's like, oh, here we go. Is, is, is your name even Laban? <laughs> you lie about everything. <laughs> 44. And thou, and let it be for witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. Because the last time he, he set, set, up, set up a pillar, it worked out pretty well for him. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones. And, and they took stones and made a heap, and they did eat there upon the heap. And Laban called it, I cannot pronounce that, but but but, but Jacob called it uh, Galid. Amen. And in verse 48, and Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galid. And Mizpah, for he said, uh, the Lord watched between me and thee when we are absent one from uh, another. Verse 50, if thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take other wives beside my, 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 my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. And Laban said to, to uh, Jacob, behold this heap, this heap, behold this pillar, for I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness and this uh, pillar be witness that I will not pass over this heap to to thee and thou shall not pass over this heap and this pillar unto me for, for harm and God the God of Abraham and, and, and the and the God of, of, of Nahor the God of their father judge betwixt us and and Jacob swear by by the fear of his father Isaac and then Jacob uh, offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread and they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount and early in the morning Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them and Laban departed and returned unto his place amen the only thing that's going to save some of us is a contract a binding contract you gotta you gotta have something you gotta have an agreement it has to be documented you gotta have something this is how prosperous pe people think wealthy people think in terms of contract contracts what is the, the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire easy when a millionaire makes a contract it's a template but a billionaire, when he thinks of a, a, a contract, it's a clear sheet of paper. Because there's nothing that's binding his thinking. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, unrelated, but it is. The cast of Friends is still getting paid $10 million a year. Friends have been off the air for over... for, for about 25 years. <laughs> The cast of friends, but they're still getting paid from that. Yeah. The di again, the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire is how they approach contracts. A millionaire thinks in terms of well, let us put a shell to uh, together. They think in terms of, of templates, but a billionaire has a blank sheet of paper. When God came to me with the family covenant. It was blank. He came to me. I didn't come to him. He came to me. And I entered into that covenant with him. It's going to work out. 
is going to work out. God said it says it will. I have been, I have done, I am doing my, my, my part of it. It will come to, to uh, together. It will come together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God blesses you for him. He doesn't bless you for you. God blesses you because of him. The, the most important thing to a king is his reputation. So God has to have blessed people. <laughs> he has to have blessed people. The people who did not understand what I just said are saying something like money isn't everything. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard because of course money is not everything. But all statements like, like, like that is reveals who the fool is among us. Because prosperous people don't even think that way. Prosperity is nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. That's what pro prosperity, pro prosperous means. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. The ones who, who is intimidated by being blessed and intimidated by other people be, being blessed think in terms of deflection. Amen. This this was very good. Exiting the uh, plantation. This was very good. This was very good. All right, y'all. Let's end this in prayer. So y'all can enjoy the rest of your day. Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Father. Bless us even now. Multiply us, Lord. Uh, according to, to your will, Father, we know the harvest. The harvest is right on time. We know the harvest is right on schedule. And we receive it, oh, oh God. Give us the mind to think in terms of billionaire contracts. There's nothing blocking our thinking. We have to be free in our mind before we become free in our lives. Let us get it in writing. Let us move forward and think in terms of generationally, not just for ourselves. That's why the blessing hasn't hit yet, because it will just only hit us. We have to make a vehicle to receive the, the, the blessings and to transfer it later gen generationally. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to be with us all the days of our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Y'all have a, a, a blessed day. All right. Bye.